Hey gang, Mocha Boy here. Welcome back, and thanks for tuning back in. So, uh, yeah, we've got a fun build today. This is probably going to be a speed build, but um, yeah, I'm going on vacation in, a, in, a, in about a week, and I needed something that I could uh, slap together really quickly. And it just so happened that um, ReadyMade RC has finally released their uh, their Nano Sky Hunter, and I wanted to just do a quick uh, setup video, show you, um, you know, give you a tour of the components, and maybe uh, give you some things to think about when you're putting yours together. Uh, this is the the, the uh, plug and play kit. This this is um, I believe the eighty dollar kit. There's another kit that's a that's right above it uh, at one hundred and ten dollars. It comes with the full FPV package. Uh, there's also just the kit only version with no electronics for fifty bucks. But um, the PNP version is awesome because uh, you, you've got the motor. This is a twenty two oh four twenty two hundred twenty two hundred motor. Uh, there's, the ESC is already inside, and I'm assuming it's uh, you know probably a 12 or 20 amp ESC. I haven't cut open the uh, the heat shrink. Uh, it comes with uh, an XT60 connector, and then I'm going to be using a DTF uh, UHF receiver because that's all I happen to have right now. Um, but that's going to make uh, re receiver receiver positioning a little complicated. Uh, I'm going to be using a little bit of welder's glue and some packing tape just to keep everything else. Uh, put together but um, yeah when you're putting this together you're gonna get the the main spar that's gonna go right into the wings you're gonna go ahead and glue those those uh, those surfaces there slap everything together throw some packing tape on there and then let it cure for about an hour uh, until it's ready to go in now as far as the the bottom side of the wing here um, a couple things to note these uh, detents here are for the uh, rear booms see that there's two little there's two little protrusions there that'll fit right into there, but it's not uh, its not an exact mate. Actually, this one goes on this side. Um, there's there's still just a little bit of play, so you're going to want to make sure that you, um, you, know, you have some sort of a, a squaring tool just to make sure that that's nice and square, you know, before you lock it in and, uh, and let that cure. And um, so, yeah, that's the way that goes. The... Uh, Servos. These are nine gram servos. Looks like they're they're already installed, so those are going to be no problem. Now the rear boom. Uh, this is a little interesting. When when it comes to you, it's going to look like like that. Just make sure you you pull the uh, the servo wire through. Just make sure that you have enough to reach into the boom. And then as far as the tail assembly is concerned, it's going to go just like this. You're going to glue that in together, and then uh, complete the connection there just like that. But um, yeah, for, for this assembly, the servo is on top. Oh, just a few other things to point out and, and a couple of features that I really, really love and wanted to uh, just make a point about noting. Um, these two screw points right here, these are plastic washers. And that's where your, your bolts will go in. So this wing is removable. You can you can glue it in, but uh, if you want, you can just you can tuck that Tuck that front in, screw the back in, and then when you're ready to, uh, you know, pack it up for the day, just unscrew the wing, and then uh, and then tie everything back together for transport. So very very nice for you know, being able to transport this uh, back and forth to the field. And uh, oh, the other thing is the the hatch. The hatch is really interesting. It comes in two parts, and they're both um, they're both magnetically latched. You've got uh, just a nice wood. FPV platform here with a through hole there to, uh, you know, to, to drop any of your electronics, or you can just leave that, um, you know, leave that on top for for some better aerodynamics, and then everything just snaps right in magnetically. So really, really nice design there. Pretty, pretty happy with the way that this uh, worked out. This is, uh, it's going to be a pretty straightforward build. I'll probably end up getting a second kit and do something a little more um, complicated with it. But there's a lot, you know, one of the things that I I noticed early on is that there's a lot of space right here in the uh, the front bay to do you know to add just about anything that you want. This is all open space here uh, for you to add any other uh, you know. I, I know a few of you are at least going to try to do uh, you know some some micro nays, 32s, maybe some additional stabilizers. There's some interesting stuff that's coming out from Orange R uh, or Orange R RX. Uh, you know they have stabilization built right into their DSMX con controllers could be something nice but I mean this is supposed to be just a park basher that can go together in about 30 or 45 minutes on the the bottom side of the uh, the plane there are these two little protrusions right here they measure exactly 38 millimeters from the front from the leading edge of the wing those are your uh, 
your CG markers. So once you get everything built up and you're ready to start testing CG, um, those are your mark points right there. So 38 millimeters from the front. And uh, the, the prevailing, um, and the prevailing uh, suggestions from the thread right now are to try to keep everything under about 400 grams, otherwise uh, you start to get into um, some dangerous tip stall tendencies. But otherwise, uh, you know, this, from all accounts and from all of the other videos, it looks like it's a, an incredible little flyer. Nothing like the, uh, the Mini Sky Hunter or any of its other bigger brothers. So yeah, I'm uh, going to go into quiet mode and start assembling everything, and then let's see, uh, let's see how long this takes us.
All right, so um, we're going to take a little bit of a pause here before we finish up this build so we can take a look at some of the uh, internal components. Uh, we've been talking in the Facebook group, and um, we've been talking in the Facebook group, and I guess there were some concerns about the ESC. Let's see what this little guy is. Uh, but there were some concerns about the ESC and whether or not it um, supports 4S. So let's just take a quick look. Yeah, hard to say. Um, not sure, uh, not exactly sure where that report might have come in from, but uh, just be wary about using this on 4S. You know, until we get some uh, until we get some flight reports in. So you know, just there you go. It's a 20 amp Hobby Wing Skywalker 2 to 3s LiPo with a 2 amp VEC. Probably would have made sense to check the label first, right? <laughs> so yeah, um, something to consider there if you're thinking about um, you know maybe swapping this out with another ESC. You know, I could easily see since we're using these uh, you know these multi rotor motors that you could throw like a BL Heli motor on there and then you just have to work out um, you know supplying power through some sort of a power distribution board. The other thing to note here is this uh, horizontal equipment plate. So interestingly enough this does slide or it, it, it is removable. Um, there were some issues with uh, with positioning this because from the base of the fuselage to here is about 22 millimeters. So if you are planning on running this in 4S mode, you're going to have to remove that plate, and uh, you know that that'll give you room to stick your 4S battery somewhere in there. Uh, there is um, there is this plate right down here that you can put a battery strap on, or maybe you could um, put a battery strap on. Actually, no, that wouldn't work. Um, so yeah, some, something to consider there for uh, you know for managing your CG. What I'm going to do though is um, I'm going to take the ESC and I'm going to put it on top for now and that will give me a little bit more room to, uh, to drop the battery right down into place. At about that position there is where you want that battery for, for the right, for the right um, center of gravity. So let's see here, just a quick dry fit and again just using those um, protrusions right there, 37 millimeters or 38 millimeters from the front. That's your, uh, those are your CG marks. Okay. So a little tail heavy there. That's because I moved the ESC back. So let's, let's move that ESC forward. Move the ESC right there. Stick the wing back on, check for balance. Oh, I realize what's not on. Um, my receiver. So that's what, that's what you're looking at. And then again, you know, if you're going to be equipping the FPV pod, what you're going to want to do is just move that a little further back, you know, get it to the point where it's tail heavy. Where it's a little tail heavy, and then um, and then start stuffing your your equipment on. Uh, and yes, this is a Dean's connector. I'm going to swap this out for uh, an XT60 uh, when this is all ready to go. But um, yeah, this is this looks like it's ready for final assembly. The uh, the glue is cured, and um, you know we're ready to uh, throw this up in the air and see if it flies. All right, so we're just going to do a quick weigh in. I've got a. Um, Got this 1500 3S 25C battery. Um, let's just do some quick. Um, yeah, there's a range of batteries that that uh, we'll probably be trying. So let's see. This one's 121, 124. So if you want, you know, kind of just a lazy long flight, uh, you know, we can try and try that. Alright, so battery, receiver, oops, pod, um, run cam, just naked there without a propeller. We're looking at uh, about 300 and 
47 grams and then with that run cam uh, add another 40 or so grams and then yeah you know a little FPV camera let's see like a cricket that keeps us right underneath 400 grams so yeah looking uh, we're looking pretty good here uh, I'm gonna get this um, slot together and see if we can go take this for a maiden flight so just a couple of things here to point out, uh, you know, that I, I thought were worth mentioning, at least as far as the design is concerned. Um, I mean, o overall, this was a dream to put together. Uh, it, it's it's quite possibly one of the uh, most pleasant builds I, I've had, and you know, I've had some some big nightmares. I've had some pretty uh, awful nightmares when it comes to putting putting together some planes, but it just goes together so neatly. And then you know, when you 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 can pull everything apart and then just um, you know get this uh, ready for transport. And then everything just goes together really nice. But I mean, it's it's so small, you could just chuck this in your trunk and not have to worry about it. But um, some of the things that I noticed here, uh, there are two inlets here for um, for airflow, just to keep everything, like your your electronic speed controllers and you know video equipment uh, cooled down as you're as you're uh, as you're flying. And then there's the exhaust port right there. So that's a really nice design consideration there. And again. You know the the uh, the detente, the protrusions for for the center of gravity. That's always a big issue when it comes to building planes. Is where's that CG? You know, putting those right on the plane. Uh, you know, so that you can do some you know balancing out in the field uh, is just fantastic. And then you know having all of the equipment already installed and ready to go. I mean, I realize that for for seasoned uh, builders, not a huge issue. You guys can you know get that stuff up and running really quickly or installed really quickly. But it was so nice to not have to worry about. Um, you know, uh, routing servo wires or, or getting the default positions of the servos or, you know, doing any of the, uh, you know, the arm bending. That's easily, like, just having that equipment in there probably saves you a good hour or two of, of build time. And once you get everything glued up and squared, you're pretty much ready to go. Now, I, I know a lot of you are going to be trying to figure out, um, you know, ways to put obscene powertrains on here. Uh, in its default configuration, 3S with the default kit and a 544, uh, a 544 propeller, um, so 5 inch propeller, four, a quad, quad blade propeller. They clock this going downwind about 70 miles an hour, so um, you're not going to have any issues with speed on 3S. But I know that uh, you know a couple of you guys are going to be doing some 125 mile per hour runs. Just remember to um, you know get yourself some room in the cockpit bay by removing that uh, horizontal plate, the, uh, the 4S plate, so that um, you know you have room to, to fit your 4S powertrain in there. I don't know what that's going to get you in terms of flight characteristics, uh, you know, by exceeding that 400 gram, that 400 gram limit. I'm sure it'll be fine, but uh, you, you're going to be getting into some tip stall conditions, uh, you know, once you start to uh, increase that that uh, payload above 400 grams. So just some some things to consider there. Um, again, so just wanted to do one quick little update uh, to show where my final um, my final component placements ended up. Um, again, I am using extremely heavy gear, and with all of this stuff, uh, with you know, with uh, with this FB with this FPV pod, along with my receiver pod and uh, receiver components and everything else, I'm just under 400 grams, and that's before adding an HD cam. So I'm gonna have to do a little, um, you know, I'm gonna have to swap out a few components. Again, this is all I had, kind of lying around. I didn't have any spare uh, spare RXs to uh, to throw in there, so I could definitely save at least enough. Um, at least enough weight to offset, you know, say something like a run cam. But uh, in order to get the CG just right, I had to put my 1500 mAh battery uh, way in the back there. I was able to keep the horizontal plate. All I have to do is uh, kind of glue it in place, lock that in place so that I can attach a battery strap to that, and then that'll hold the, uh, the battery in place. Uh, the receiver's way back there. Um, one thing I did with the, FP, uh, with the FPV pod, very simple, AOM way, 200 milliwatt, uh, you know, with uh, with a custom harness that I put together, this goes directly into the balance tap of the um, of the battery, and then uh, you're good to go. Now, interestingly enough, here, uh, interestingly enough, with some of these new transmitters, uh, it's kind of tough here to to see, but they have they do such a good job of filtering that you don't even need an LC filter in most cases, unless you're running extremely high power systems, uh, or, or you know, high voltage power systems. But you know, doing something like this and just connecting it directly to the uh, to the battery with you know, a transmitter like this you get very clean video. Um, once everything is set up, plugs in very nicely, very neatly.
and that's it. All you got to do is just bolt that in, and uh, you know this is pretty much ready to ready to fly. Probably do a little bit here just to uh, just to tighten up some of that wiring, but uh, for the most part, she's ready to go. Just add her stickers and go fly. Hey gang, so uh, we're here at the field, and we're going to go and uh, try to maiden this, or rather remaiden it. Had an unfortunate mishap here. I wanted to show you, and uh, you know, it's unfortunate for me, but fortunate for you. Uh, I, I discovered where the stress fractures are, or where the stress points for the fuselage are. So the uh, the toe here can actually rip the nose off, and then uh, yeah, this area right back here. Um, the important thing to note there is verify your, tr your control surfaces before you go up. I was a little too excited and a little too rushed, and uh, it bit me in the butt. So anyway, uh, all of those issues have been fixed, and we're going to try this one more time.